Okay, um, as promised, we've got League of Nations videos. The the first video we're going to look at here is the actual aims and setup of the league. Because you could be asked questions on the League of Nations, like you know, for example, which was the bigger reason for the downfall of the League of Nations, the failure of the league? Was it the structure of the league, or was it the Manchurian crisis, for example? So you've got to know about the background to the League of Nations being set up. And really there were four clear aims for the League of Nations in being set up. It was to encourage cooperation between um, countries again. So it was to get countries to cooperate and it was to make a better world. Two, stop aggression. Stop another war happening. We, we didn't want a repeat of World War One. Nobody did. Well, apart from maybe Hitler, okay? Um, disarmament. To get countries to disarm. And finally, to improve social and living conditions um, in the world, right? Now, we know this was the brainchild of um, Woodrow Wilson of the USA. Some surprises coming up. Originally 42 members. This will swell to 59 members in the 1930s. Straight away, you've got uh, Germany, for example, the defeated countries, defeated powers, were not allowed to join. So you see, Germany aren't allowed in. Russia was also not allowed in because they were communist and there was a great suspicion starting to build of Russia and communism at this time. So if you think about it in Europe, you've got the central power of the um, of Europe, not there, Germany. Yes, hurt by World War I, but also very, 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 potentially again, very powerful. Not there. Russia, communist, the power of Eastern Europe, not allowed. Okay, so two down. Surprisingly, no USA either, right? Now, Woodrow Wilson, who was the president, strongly believed in America uh, being in the league and being, a, uh, being the, the standard bearer of the league, the, the one who would be there, right, who would take a leading role, the leader. The American public didn't agree. Woodrow Wilson made himself ill campaigning to get his League of Nations idea through. The American public didn't want it. The American public would turn towards the Republicans, the Republican Party, and they preferred the policies such as going back into isolationism and returning to normalcy, um, going, staying out of European affairs, right? So you've got a view going on here now is really, is the League of Nations as strong as it could have been? And particularly from Germany, is it a victory club? Is it a club for the, the countries that had actually um, won, who were the victors? Right? So the structure of the league, the setup to it, let's see what, how this is going to go. You'd have an assembly there. So every country got one vote in what was happening. So there was an assembly. Think of what you have on a Friday if you're year 11 at my school. Right? You've also got a council. Now the council would meet several times a year and in an emergency. So in an emergency the council would meet and there were five permanent members here. Now of these permanent members, each had the right to block any idea, anything that was being proposed. So this could cause delay, right, in dealing with key issues if they didn't agree. So there's potential problems here as well, right? Then you've got five of these powers who would meet. So you've obviously got five big dogs in the League of Nations, so to speak, all right? You've got the Permanent Court of Justice. This was based in The Hague, and the idea was settle disputes peacefully, but they had no power of enforcing it, no power of making countries who broke rules do anything about it really and finally you've got the secretariat which is where it's just a record keeping place you know records are kept civil service type thing okay now league of nation if something goes wrong this is what they can do they could put the pressure on so they could say come on you need to do that you need to get it done lean on other countries try and make their way felt they put pressure on okay the countries of the League could refuse to trade, right? So countries in the League of Nations could say, right, we are all not going to trade with you. Now, this should be effective on the surface, but you've still got countries such as the USA, Germany, Russia, who aren't there. So you could potentially have you trade with these countries and still keep your head above water. Now, you've got to think, would countries like the USA as the 1920s progress and the USA hits depression, do you really think countries such as in the league and out of the league are going to cut their own nose off despite their face and say, we're not going to trade with you anymore? And the answer is no. 
countries didn't want their trade to be hurt, didn't want their money to be hurt, particularly when the world goes into depression. Um, you also could see member countries come together and send the troops in, but did anyone really want to do that following World War I? Right? Did anyone want to be getting involved as well in wars halfway across the world where there are people at home, imagine being a politician, oh yeah we're going to war again, we're going to war with a country who are you know, in Africa, we're going to go to Abyssinia. The average person wouldn't know what Abyssinia was, so how do you justify a war about somewhere that people didn't know existed, think it would have nothing to do for example with Britain and World War I's fresh in their minds, it wasn't realistic. Now, on top of that, at the start of it, there is a lot of good feeling and goodwill towards the League. Countries wanted it to succeed. People wanted peace because the horrors of war were fresh. So there was a lot of goodwill at the start. And there were some early successes, so you see some land disputes settled. You also see refugees being helped. You see social conditions improve. The spread of medicine and dealing with the spread of disease also happened. But there's a lot of weaknesses. Now, as I've Firstly said, the USA didn't join. This was their brainchild. America, after World War I, were the world power. There was now America lying, and then you start getting your other powers underneath, right? America didn't join the League, right? The American army aren't there. America will, will not be there backing up every League of Nations decision. So this is a huge glaring weakness. They're relying on goodwill and persuasion. Now, this is all fine and well, but it doesn't work when you're dealing with dictators like Mussolini. It, it isn't going to work. Do the right thing isn't always necessarily going to be effective with people. There's got to be something next. If goodwill and persuasion don't work, there's got to be a follow-up. There wasn't, really, okay? There's no permanent army, as I've, as I've previously talked about. Disarmament? That wasn't going to happen. If you're France, are you going to disarm when Germany are permanently on your border after what's happened before? No. So countries didn't want to disarm. World War One was fresh in their mind. They weren't going to do it. And the structure was a complete disaster, right? Every country had to be in agreement before something would happen. So as I've said before, your council might not agree. Well, you don't get a quick decision. So the League of Nations, some would say, was it doomed from the start? We're going to now look. Manchuria and Abyssinia in the next video. Thanks for watching.